Good afternoon. I'm really happy to see everybody here. Let me see some old friends here, a number of our board members, and I'm Bob Horvath. I'm the chairman of the board of the Norman Rockwell Museum. And I see Marion Razor up here and Marshall, and I see their friend, the Wassers, and they're very instrumental in bringing this all together tonight. And what better thing to have is a nice beer tasting on a hot summer night like this. Uh, I'm very excited to introduce Bob Russell of Collective Arts Brewing. He's the co-founder of Collective Arts, and he, he, Bob sought to bring art and illustration together. In other words, the cans have the art on it. And this is very similar to what Norman Rockwell did with his advertisements for the various beer companies over the year. So I'm not going to take that much time. Bring Bob up here and let the other Bob talk, and I will sit down. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Come on, Bob. Good to see you. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you very much. I have to say that this is the most um, awesome room I've ever spoken into, and I am really nervous that I say the right things about Norman Rockwell, or some of these paintings are going to start shaking. Anyways, I am thrilled to share with you the collective arts story today, but before I begin, I would like to acknowledge um, some people that made this happen my good friend, Art and Terry Wasser, so thank you very much. Um, and uh, Bailey Gervin and uh, Patrick O'Donnell of the Norman Rockwell Museum, we've been in touch constantly for the last, I think, seven or eight months. I didn't think she'd think I'd show up. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, believe it or not, Norman Rockwell has had a huge influence on my life and career. As a creative director, I founded and operated a North American design agency for 35 years, and Norman Rockwell helped shape um, the way um, and form my respect of the power of a story um, through images, words, design to both motivate. His paintbrush also colored the images of my mother's life. My mother grew up in a small mining town of Franklin, New Jersey where her father was a town butcher and a grocery store owner. She was the youngest of a family of 11. She lived through the Great Depression and World War II. My mother often spoke about her love for the town, and she shared stories about her, father, her family during the, her, 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 her grandfather um, uh, feeding families uh, the, throughout the Depression, even though they didn't have the means to pay for the food. Uh, and her older brothers and sisters both served in their uh, country during the war, war. Tales of the town cinema, Mrs. Grossman's Bakery, the town pond, Franklin High School, and selling the miners English pasties to cook on their shovels in the mine, all left me with indelible images of America during the 30s, 40s, and 50s. My father, from the University of Toronto as a mining engineer, chose to move to Franklin, New Jersey. I think most mines were very, very far from civilization. He gleefully discovered that the New Jersey zinc mine was only 80 miles from New York City. And at the time, this was very important to my fun-loving father. My parents met at a church social, fell in love, got married, and as the mine was nearing the end of its productive life, moved back to Hamilton, Ontario, where I was born. As a kid growing up in Canada, I, my summer vacations I spent in Franklin, swimming in the same pond my mother talked about, going to the same cinema, and I spent many, many hours at my Uncle Johnny's milk bar. Do you know, I don't know if you guys remember what a milk bar is. Um, and where characters and the circumstances of American life happened every day. This is where I got to know Norman Rockwell's work. The Saturday Evening Post magazine was everywhere. My mother was a school teacher. I should remember to do this too. I'm going to skip ahead. My mother was a school teacher and an artist. Art projects became an early ritual in my life. At four, I started to go to art school on, on Saturdays. This is probably why I never learned how to play hockey, which, <laughs> which is very, very un Canadian. After studying fine arts in college, I had the opportunity to tour New England. My road trip took me through my now home, Vermont, 
through, west, through upstate New York into western Massachusetts where I experienced firsthand the small towns in New England and, saw, and, and, and experienced the hospitality and beauty there. This is where I first saw my first live Norman Rockwells while staying at the Red Lion Inn with the sketches on the hallways walls. I spent hours absorbing Norman Rockwell's work in the museum when it was on Main Street. His work triggered memories of my mother's stories while, she lived, while growing up in Franklin. Rockwell's painting documented American life and communities and everyday situations portrayed in his work to find the American gestalt. These individual vignettes through distributed media became what everyday Americans viewed as their America. Rockwell's work, in all of his genius, would likely would have never achieved household brand status had it not been for the distribution and exposure that his work, was, uh, that his work received through magazines Boy's Life, Nor um, Saturday Evening Post, and Look Magazine. Rockwell's 317 covers secured his legacy of bringing American values to life. Rockwell portrayed what he saw as the best of American culture. His work was comforting, reassuring, and unifying all the time when America was changing. His work illustrated an aspirational view of America and a reminder that community, respect for and concern for others, and a promise of real tangible values were alive and well in small town USA. How does Norman Rockwell relate to what we're creating at, tech, at Collective Arts? Well, before I elaborate, I'd like to give you a short history of collective arts. Matt Johnson, my partner, and I decided to leave our respective companies to work on an idea for a craft brewery we had been cooking, up, cooking, about, cooking for about two years. Matt was at the time the senior VP of marketing and sales at Canada's oldest family-run brewery, Moosehead. I had spent my career as a creative director and marketer conceiving, redesigning, and launching brands for the likes of Nestle's, Kellogg's, Quaker Oats, Molson Coors, and Camels, among others. In retrospect, much of my career working for Fortune 500 companies was soulless. I became a conspirator in manufacturing reasons and developing visual communications to convince consumers like you to, to buy products that I just didn't believe in. I moved to Vermont. I moved to Vermont after closing my firm in Toronto 11 years ago. And with the help of my wife Jess, we began to focus on helping smaller artisanal producers and entrepreneurs to brand and market their products. Here I found a new clientele and was energized by the role design played in creating brands that captured the authentic visions of these small producers. Moosehead also became a client of the firm. This is where I met my partner. While we were working together, Matt confided that he had other ambitions, and we started to talk about craft beer and the extraordinary opportunity there was in the category. We discovered, discovered not only each other's passion for beer, but for art and music. My years as a creative director introduced me to many artists and illustrators who were and still are extraordinary, extraordinary extraordinarily talented, and many of them continue to struggle with visibility and recognition. Matt saw similarities in the emerging musicians. Collective Arts fuses the art of craft brewing with the inspired talents of merging artists and musicians. This became our mission, our vision, and the reason for being as a company. Our company is committed to finding exposing and promoting the work of artists and to create world-class craft beer. With the number of craft breweries approaching 8,000 in the U.S. today, our unique commitment to art and music has become a significant differentiator in, a crowded beer craft, in the crowded craft beer market. From a brand and business perspective, we believe we have cracked the code on geographical relevance that limits many craft brewers today. As the number of craft breweries go, grow, consumers embrace, have embraced their local craft brewers. Think about the brewery in each of your towns. They become part of the fabric of your communities and exist because of your support. These local, local brewers have become the fastest growing sector in craft brewing today. 
This hyperlocal trend is also having a very negative impact on craft brewers. The majority, the majority of these brewers lose their relevance the further away their products are sold from their brewery. The loyalty that they have at home in their home community disappears as they enter the trading territory of another local brand. This ultimately suffocates a local brewery's ability to grow. And for many, they may have to face the realization of closure. Collective Arts, although we are, although we are from Hamilton, Ontario, is location agnostic. Our focus is on engaging um, the global art community and the fan base that it sees as us as, as we are committed to improving the visibility of artists through our unique distribution channel, the group, the beer can. A brand's real value is based on trust. This trust is earned by the interactions it has with its consumers, trade, partners, investors, and media. A brand's value is the sum of multiple connections, from the product inside the package to the brand experiences, advertising, events, promotion, call centers, and on and on and on. The goal of brand strategists and designers are to be able to coalesce brand, the brand's position, what is what the brand uniquely stands for, the emotional and functional benefits of the brand and the brand's personality into a singular icon and or recognizable image uh, which is typically a type, symbol, um, a photograph, or an illustration and a name. Think Frosted Flakes. Oh, here we go. We have technical difficulties. Well, we may have to do this without a... Oh, there we go. Old school, got it. So, think Frosted Flakes, or Nike, or Coors, Tony, the Swoosh, or the Colorado Rockies. Think about the coffee you had this morning, the car you drove here in, what brands are on your shopping list this week. And abstractly, a brand is a reason why you might choose one form stand to buy, buy your vegetables over another. Remember, a brand trust is the value of the accumulation of positive experiences. The majority of the brands follow a simple tried and true formula, primarily communi communicating a brand's participated and promoted this method, method of brand recognition in the past. Unfortunately, for many of this, for many, the strategy is now as a result, these brands must rely heavily on media to support and communicate their positions and relevance. These legacy brands continue to pump millions of dollars into sponsorship, commercials, web-based advertising, retail pricing strategies, all to convince consumers that their brands are still relevant, meaningful, and different from their competitors. With the continued fragmenting of traditional media, decline of print, the changing landscape of bricks and mortar retail, and the ever evolving social media platforms all have made significant challenges in the awareness of these brands. Well, I'm gonna have to do it this way. There we go. Social media has swung open the doors for fresh opportunities for aware brands to embrace and change and to interact with consumers. Entrepreneurially led brands like J Street Skis, Casper Mattresses, Wholesale Culture have created new marketplaces for their businesses. The rise of low to no cost social media networks, including Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, makes real communications possible um, with potential customers. These artisans and entrepreneurs now have the ability to sell their products directly to customers online, circumventing retailers via e-commerce. This has resulted in a relatively barrier-free access to global markets for savvy entrepreneurs. I'm not even gonna attempt that. Like the, op the entrepreneurial brands I just spoke of, we have created a, dis a disruptive brand in turning our brand model upside down. 
We don't control our brand. We simply orchestrate its co-creation. Our packaging has give, been given over to the artists and musicians, and collective arts brand has become secondary to the arts, artist's work. Four times a year, through our calls for art, artists and musicians submit their work to be selected for our ever-evolving cans. Every three months, we launch four pieces of art for each of our seven core beers, which if you're doing the math, is 16 pieces of art for each core beer each and every year. Add at least two limited, limited release beers a month and eight curated sub-series a year, Collective Arts is now publishing at least 168 distinct can art, art cans per year. The work on the cans provides an at-the-moment view of politics, themes, social issues, memes, art trends, music genres, color, and textures from around the globe. Our brand has become the artist brand. They are our partners and co-creators, and we are becoming a true advocate um, for artists globally. The work which appears on our cans are selected by a jury, usually seven to nine uh, people, which is made up of music programmers, gallery owners, notable artists, um, uh, DJs, chroniclers of cultures, art directors, and so on. A new jury is appointed for each call, each call for art, which inserts a varied and open-minded uh, approach to the art that is selected. So, how did we get there? In May of 2013, we launched a social media campaign, Your Art Here. We had no brewery, we had no beer, but we had an, but we had an idea. We did not know how artists would respond to our call for art. What we did know is that we have a great deal of respect for artists and, and, uh, and the art community, and we knew that our company had to be very artist and musician friendly. Artists are quite aware and quick to reject the promise of exposure as payment. Our agreement with artists had to be very protective of the artists and their work. Our terms of use stipulated that we do not own the work but we, are simply grant, we simply were granted the rights to use the work for a limited time on our labels and for our promotion purposes. We did not ask for new work uh, to be created, only work that they may have already produced. Our promise to artists was that we would promote their work by way of artist profiles and interviews, series launches featuring the artists, and a growing brand distribution network for their work to be seen. Artist credits on the cans, direct links to their artist social media sites, and, of course, payment for their work. We also offered pay additional payments for selective artists um, to be featured on limited edition prints and t-shirts and other merchandise. Our commitment to each artist is core to Collective Arts. By July 2013, we'd reached, we received over 500 submissions and 93 artists were selected by our first jury. And as a result, we had just created the most complicated beer brand in the world to execute. <laughs> Branding and beer industry experts thought we were crazy. Actually, they used different words, but that was the most PC I could come up with. The consumers, they said, would never get what we were doing, and Collective Arts was doomed for failure. We launched Collective Arts and our first two beers, September 2013, at the Gladstone Hotel in Toronto. The beers we created by, were created by our extraordinary brewmaster, Ryan Morrow. Ryan currently oversees all of our recipe production and coordinates all of our collaborative beer initiatives. Um, Saint of Circumstance, which you will get to try tonight, uh, a blonde air in, uh, ale infused with seasonal citrus, and Rhyme and Reason, an American pale ale, featured the 93 different artists I spoke of. Our approach to applying multiple pieces of art on labels could not have been possible in the months prior to our launch, simply because the technology to execute did not exist. It took a perfect storm of emerging technologies to enable, enable us to launch our first beer. First, social media allowed us to widely advertise collective arts. Second, digital printing provided the ability to run multiple images in a single print run. And finally, Blipper, a nascent augmented reality publishing platform, 
think scanning a barcode, only the art is the code, allowed our drinkers to download an app, scan the labels, which took the viewer directly to a specific brand experience, the artist's bio, an audio track, or a video. These technologies, along with our well-crafted beer, created an experience unlike anything anybody had seen. The Toronto Art and Music Community embraced collective arts. The press and media anointed us as the brand to watch. Then an extraordinary thing happened. The most prestigious social media network that follows craft beer globally, ratebeer.com, named us after just three months in business, the best new brewery in Ontario. And at the same time, Rhyme and Reason, our pale ale, was honored with the gold medal at the Canadian Brewing Awards. Needless to say, our sales took off. And our next call for art attracted more than 1,200 submissions. Our model was proving itself. Our drinkers um, are, are made up of two, um, two select groups, Richard Florida's creative class and millennials of drinking age. The sport we gave artists resonated with them deeply and it is a discoverable, shareable, experiential, and cause-related business centered in art, music, and beer. Collective Arts hits all key metrics of these consumer audiences' buying habits. We are, a brewing, uh, we are a brewery, we are a publishing platform, and a content provider focused on supporting emerging artists and making great craft beer. These are tenants of our brand. Collective Arts is recognized for innovation and quality of our brew. Our beers are sought after nationally and internationally, leading to the mercurial growth of our company. Collective Arts beers are currently available across Canada, in 15 US states, Sweden, where remarkably our Radio the Mothership is the number one double IPA in the country, in Italy, in Spain, in Norway, and Australia. In September, we are launching Collective Arts New York City. And in the same month, we're launching the United Kingdom. This fall, we are entering into a brewing relationship to contract brew our beer in the, United, in the EU, critical to our European expansion. And, and we are engaging in a similar partnership in Australia. To date, we've released over 25 collaborations with, with some of the best brewers in the world. We've attended curated beer festivals in Iceland, Spain, Estonia, Sweden, Australia, and the UK. These strategic decisions and opportunities for collective arts all lead to our brand's ability to engage and support more artists. This is not going to work. I'll, we can sit down and look at this later. Uh, the true backbone of our art and music side of Collective Arts Brewing has been the creation of an online vehicle that allows the art community to spit, submit work for our calls to art and add their content, their bios, their social media links, um, etc. With these platforms, our jurors review, critique, and select work for each can art series. Our web and mobile platforms has been designed to feature our beers, the work of artists, musicians, and relevant content. We have created an ecosystem for a brand. This 360 degree system illustrates how brewing great beer, our calls for art, curated art cans, art, music, and beer events, um, custom content such as our black box sessions, you'll see these um, out on the terrace, they're playing them live all night and then pushing out all of our content over social media about the artists um, uh, to drive traffic to the artists' websites uh, and personal sites online. These artists respond in turn by posting their content featuring our relationship with them uh, through their media channels, which extends our, our brand message and extends, obviously, our brand reach. Since our inception almost five years ago, we've received over 19,000 submissions of art from artists and musicians rating 43 different countries in the world. 
To date, we have paid for and published over 650 artists and music's work, musicians' work. So, back to Norman Rockwell. Boy's Life, Saturday Evening Post, and Look all became distribution channels that made Rockwell a household name and a brand. His extraordinary talent, visual storytelling, craftsmanship, unique approachable characters, compositions, and subject matters was his true and remarkable genius. Arguably, even without these channels, he would have been famous. But how famous would he have been? Would American values as illustrated by Rockwell have had the impact without the post? Would the Four Seasons have even been considered for, for the very successful campaign to raise money for the war ponds in 1943 if they weren't already revealed and embraced by hundreds of thousands of people? His depictions of civil rights movement would likely have not seen the light of day due to the conservative leadership of the Saturday Evening Post had, it not, had he not moved to look. The height of Saturday Evening Post circulation in 1960 was 600 million copies. This year, Collective Arts will produce up, upwards of 9,800,000 cans of beer. As we continue to grow, we reach new markets around the globe. We provide artists with a viable, unique channel for their art to be viewed by an ever-growing number of consumers. Our process of well-regarded professionals during this, these artists' work adds legitimacy to their efforts, ultimately introducing artists to new opportunities in an ever-crowded marketplace. Like the publications distribution channels that advanced Norman Rockwell, our beers have become a channel for our drinkers to discover, share, collect, and spend time to appreciate these artists' work. Collective Arts fuses the art of craft brewing with the inspired talents of emerging artists and musicians. Collective Arts exist to connect work of artists and musicians through the sociability of great craft beer. So thank you. and. Please enjoy our beer out on the terrace tonight. Thank you.